Hello everyone, I'm Daz, and this week I've decided to make two videos for Wednesday rather than just one. So it's a four video week, sorry to blow up you guys' feed. I know the fourth video is on my second channel, but I thought with what's happening with these tornadoes and with the proximity of the Lawrence tornado to where I live in Jefferson City in my state, I can't help but think about this sort of thing. So I want to talk about the 2019 tornado season and also sort of some background on tornadoes and some safety precautions to take since we're not quite out of the woods yet with June being the end of tornado season. So I'm going to read a piece from Vice News on some stats on this year's tornado season. Tuesday's storms came a day after 53 suspected tornadoes hit across eight states. Some of the worst damage was reported in Ohio, where storms hit the cities of Salina and Dayton. In Salina, an 81-year-old man was killed when high winds picked up a parked car and slammed it into his house while he slept. Tuesday marked the 12th straight day when at least eight tornadoes were reported breaking a record dating back to 1980. So this year, the National Weather Service has received 934 tornado reports well up on the yearly average of 743 observed tornadoes. The majority of those reported sightings have come in the last 30 days alone, with federal government weather forecasters logging preliminary reports more than 500 tornadoes, though experts warn this figure will drop as it likely includes reports of the same twister seen by two or more people. 38 people have died in 10 tornadoes in the United States this year, including seven in the last week alone across Iowa, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Ohio. The National Weather Service received more than 55 tornado reports in eight states Monday and Tuesday. Parts of Oklahoma and Kansas were still under tornado warnings on Tuesday. The storm streak is caused by two factors, a high-pressure area in the south east and a cold trowel trapped over the Rockies. The combination forces moist warm air from the Gulf of Mexico into central U.S. states sparking the thunderstorms and tornadoes. Forecasters are warning that the severe weather is unlikely to let up late this week. Neither one of these large systems, the high over the southeast or the trowel over the Rockies, are showing signs of moving, said Patrick Marsh, warning coordination meteorologist for the Federal Storm Prediction Center. It's a little unusual for them to be so entrenched this late in the season. So I'm going to stop there. That article is a little over a week old now. So as far as I know, we don't have to worry about the end of that article and what's expected, but we are still in tornado season. And as a Midwesterner, I'm no stranger to tornado drills and the concern over it. I feel like people around me living in Nebraska and Missouri took Tornadoes kind of lightly, like we hear about them, but they tend to strike rural areas. I feel like this recent spat of tornadoes is making more people rethink how to be safer and what to do during such situations. So tornadoes are violent rotating funnel columns of air. Their peak season is between mid-March and late June, and they're measured by an enhanced Fujita scale. A weak tornado is about 65 to 85 miles per hour. That's an EF0. An EF1 is 86 to 110 miles per hour. That can cause roof damage. An EF2 is 111 to 135 miles per hour. That's home damage. An EF3 is 136 to 165 miles per hour. That's building loss and an EF4 is 106 to 200 miles per hour. That's trains toss. That's an EF4, and then that's considered devastating, whereas the catastrophic is a EF5, which is 200 miles per hour or more. So those are the uh, six levels of a tornado on an enhanced fajita scale. What happened in Lawrence recently was an EF4 tornado. So the deadliest tornado in world history was in Delta Per Satoria tornado in Bangladesh on April 26 of 1989, which killed approximately 1,300 people. In its history, Bangladesh has had at least 19 tornadoes kill more than 100 people, almost half of the total for the rest of the world. So something very interesting I want to talk about concerning tornadoes is a tornado outbreak, which I feel like a lot of people aren't familiar with, but it explains how you get so many tornadoes at once. A tornado outbreak is the occurrence of multiple tornadoes spawned by the same synoptic scale weather system. The number of tornadoes required to qualify as an outbreak typically are at least 6 to 10. The largest outbreak was 1974, but that record was broken in 2011 between April 25th and 28th, which resulted in 
360 tornadoes and 324 tornadic fatalities, which is a lot. And that was the year of the Joplin tornado as well. Whenever you're in a tornado risk, you often will see a watch or a warning. A watch is the possibility, whereas the warning is it's happening and to seek shelter. I remember I kind of talked about this in the stream a couple of weeks ago, how that Friday before we were under a warning and the sirens would not stop blaring. It did get a little bit concerning. I stepped outside and the wind was blowing a lot, but it went around us, which I was so thankful for. So what to do if you're in a warning? You should seek shelter. It should be in a sturdy building. Go to a basement or a storm cellar if you have one. If there's no basement, go to the interior room and avoid windows, doors, and outside walls. If someone is stuck outside, avoid staying under an overpass or bridge. Flatter areas are safer. Beware of flying debris and use arms to cover your head and neck. Sometimes you can't control where you are. The uh, tornado that happened in Lawrence and there was another one that happened near Excelsior Springs Hospital in Missouri, both in the metro Kansas City area. A lot of people were stuck on the highway during that tornado, so they just kind of had to sit there in their cars. So a checklist of things to have, and I would recommend having these things on hand before a tornado happens so you're not scrambling. And we talk a little bit about this in the stream. Some of you guys are on it, but some of us, like myself, need to prepare. Is to have, I would say, a backpack if you can of these things, or a duffel bag. Have water. One gallon of water per person per day for at least three days for drinking and sanitation. Food. At least three days supply of non-perishable food. A battery-powered or hand-crank radio and an NOAA weather radio with tone alert. A flashlight, a first aid kit, extra batteries, whistles to signal for help, dust masks to help filter contaminated air, and plastic sheeting and duct tape to shelter in place. Moist towelettes, garbage bags, and plastic ties for personal sanitation. Wrench or pliers to turn off utilities. Manual can openers for food. Local maps. Cell phones with chargers and a backup battery. A sleeping bag or warm blanket for each person. Complete change of clothing appropriate for your climate and sturdy shoes. Household chlorine bleach and medicine. Dropper to disinfect water. Fire extinguisher. Matches in a waterproof container. Feminine supplies and personal hygiene items. Mess kits, paper cups, plates, paper towels and plastic utensils. A paper and pencil. Prescription medications. Non-prescription medications such as pain relievers and anti-diarrhea medication antacids or laxatives, glass and contact lens solution, infant formula, bottles, diapers, wipes, diaper rash cream, pet food and extra water for your pet, cash or traveler's checks, important family documents such as copies of your insurance policies, identification, and bank account records saved electronically or in a waterproof portable container, books, games, puzzles, or other activities for children. So I know that list was comprehensive and I went through it a bit fast. I'm sorry I speak very quickly, but I do think this is a good starting list. I'm sure there are things you can tweak on it, but I just wanted to share this information with you guys and stay on this. And not to mention there's still a lot of flash flooding that's occurring from these storms and we still have the rivers still experiencing rises. So between flooding and tornado season, it's been kind of crazy here and I feel like this hurricane season is going to be wild. That starts up in June and goes, I believe, to September. So just be prepared. And I feel like even a lot of this stuff you can use to prepare for a tornado, you could use to prepare for a hurricane. But I hope that you guys enjoyed this video on this season and also on tornadoes and what to do in the situation you are experiencing one and how to prepare. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful week. Be sure to check out the second upload of the day and I hope that you all take care and God bless.